Smarties, today we are rounding out our three-episode arc on how parenting and educational therapy intersect. Two weeks ago, in episode 293, we talked about why it's important for parents to get comfortable with being uncomfortable, and honestly, why it's important for educational therapists to be comfortable with being uncomfortable as well. Last week, in episode 294, we chatted about the whys and hows of displaying failure, and today, in episode 295, we are digging into to why praise and feedback should be extremely specific. Smarties, it's been a while since we've asked you to do this, but if you are enjoying our podcast, there are two ways that you could support the work that we're doing. The first is that you could go support the work that we're doing on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash learn smarter podcast. That is where we share freebies behind the scenes stuff. And that is where you can hear all the extended conversations from previous guests that we've had on for years. And then you can also support the work that we're doing over here at Learn Smarter Podcast by going ahead and giving us a five-star review and a comment. If you are enjoying the podcast, please share that information on Apple Podcasts or with somebody you think would benefit from hearing the podcast. Let's dig in. You want to learn faster, but sometimes working harder is just not the answer. You have to learn smarter. The Educational Therapy Podcast. Hi, Smarties. Welcome to episode 295 of Learn Smarter, the educational therapy podcast. I'm Stephanie Pitts. And I'm Rachel Cap. And today we're talking about praise and being specific with praise. Oh, yeah. This is a good one. Mm-hmm. So, Steph, when I pitched you this idea, what were your thoughts? I thought, oh, that's interesting. I think that is also important and something that we get asked about how to help parents be a little more intentional And the fact that also talking about being intentional is good for everyone to rehear and recalibrate, especially in the new year, with let's be really intentional with the type of praises we're giving and why it's so important. I agree, Steph. I think that this is a really good opportunity for us to talk about intentionality and also to talk about how it is important to give praise even when you're frustrated. And this is something that we work oftentimes with the families of the learners on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just really easy to focus on what your learner is not doing yet. And even me adding yet on to the end of that sentence, it can be something that families can learn. But we do have to acknowledge where the growth is happening, even if it's not happening in the way that families want yet. Right? Yeah, the speed that would be preferable and what it looks like in general that a parent might imagine or want or feel comforted by. But feedback is important. And being intentional with the feedback that you're giving is something that I think we can all benefit from. Absolutely. So, Rach, okay, so tell us about how and when feedback should be used. So feedback should be used in a variety of ways. And feedback is not always praise, right? Mm -hmm. Feedback is just a reflection back to somebody about what was observed and where you want to go. So an area of growth is an opportunity for feedback, both highlighting it as an area of need for development. And then when your learner actually does do something different and you're seeing growth. So there's kind of two ideas there. Also, you do want to acknowledge what is going well with your learner. Yeah. Especially in the family structure, it does not always have to be grade centered, meaning it's not always a reflection of the grade that was earned. But if your learner got started on the project earlier than they typically would have, that's an opportunity for praise. Even if the end result is still that they were up until midnight. Yeah. I noticed you were trying not to do that. Maybe next time we can cut it off at 11. That is incremental growth and progress. And then, Steph, what would you add about that? I really like the way that you said, I noticed that you started earlier, or I noticed that you got started when it was first assigned. Yeah. Even if they then didn't do anything in the middle for quite a while, right? I think that that's really important in stopping to think about those moments so that those moments continue to grow and will be repeated. So the acknowledging of 
what is also going well is so important. So this is often a question that I ask my clients, what worked, what's working, what didn't work, what's not working. I think that's important for feedback, but also for reflection. I like it. Another example is I really appreciate how you began that assignment by using sentence starters. Mm -hmm. It's really specific to the strategy and to the goal of starting versus way to get that done. Yeah. Because then it becomes all about completion. Mm -hmm. We got to be focused on starting as well. Let's take that sentence starter, because if you're an educational therapist, you might use that language. But let's do an example of parental language. Let's use the messy room. Okay, so the equivalent for a messy room is, I really like the way you put all of your dirty clothes in one pile. Did it make it into the laundry basket? Probably not. But like that was a start. There was a pile. And it was clear. A clear pile is great. That's a great starting point. I really appreciate how I can see the floor of your room right now. There you go. And we don't have to comment in addition to... But wouldn't it be great if you would just put it in the hamper? Yeah. Yeah, you stop there. I'm pretty sure that a lot of people are feeling that example. Like they're going, oh, yeah, that's something that we deal with in our household. As hard as it is, because we just want the end result. Yeah, of course. But we want to make sure we're being specific in the praise so that we can start to build some esteem for our learners and start to acknowledge the growth that actually is occurring with the learners. Because as we always say, Success will build success. It will. It will. And I think, you know, taking that example one step further is knowing that we're breaking down the task for them and that we don't expect them to be able to go from messy room to clean room every time we ask them to do it. All right. We're breaking it down. It's taken steps. With that, Smarties, we hope we've given you something to think about in the next week and have a great week. Have a great week.